Let's turn Second Corinthians chapter six, verse seventeen. Second Corinthians chapter six, verse seventeen. Wherefore come out from among them and be ye separate, says the Lord, and touch not the the unclean thing, and I will receive you. And will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Thank God for His word. Uh, here, the Lord commanded uh, His sons and daughters come out from among them and be ye separate and touch not the unclean thing and I will receive you. Uh, this is the commandment of biblical separation. Separate yourselves from uh, unclean thing. Don't touch. So in history, we can see uh, unclean things and unbelief. Uh, in the history of fundamentalism, the modernism, all the first doctrines from first teachers, we have to separate from this kind of thing and we must be clean and be holy. Okay. Okay, let's see uh, continually about uh, Machen's word uh, establishing the Westminster Theological Seminary. He speaks, he spoke continually. That system of theology, that body of truth which we find in the Bible is a reformed faith and faith commonly called Calvinistic which is set forth so gloriously in the conf confession and catechisms of the Presbyterian Church. The Westminster Theological Seminary took the name from Westminster Standards. Because the old Princeton, uh, no, no, the Princeton Theological Seminary and PCUSA, they reject uh, the faith in the Westminster standards. Uh, the every Presbyterian church around the world, they accept the Westminster standards as their the stance of the faith. So if anyone, any denomination, any church reject the Westminster standard, it means they are no more Presbyterian. No more Presbyterian church, no more Presbyterian minister, no more Presbyterian faith. It means they are not Calvinistic, uh, even they are not reform, re, uh, they are not believing in reformed theology, reformed faith, even they deny some fundamental doctrines from the Bible. So, Dr. Machen, he want to emphasize the Westminster Confession of Faith. So he took the name Westminster. It is sometimes referred to as a mandate creed, man-made creed, but we do not regard it as such. We regard it in accordance with our ordination pledge as ministers in the Presbyterian Church as a creed which God has taught us in His Word. If it is contrary to the Bible, it is false. But we hold that it is not contrary to the Bible, but in accordance with the Bible and true. I said, we are accept and we are believe the Westminster Confession of Faith because 
all the doctrine in uh, Westminster Confession confessional faith comes from the Bible. This is any contradiction uh, to the Bible, but in accordance with the Bible and true. So this is not man-made creed. This is comes out from the Bible. So we are believing all the doctrine in Westminster Confession of Faith. We, it means we are, uh, living, we are believing in accordance with the Bible. It is very, very important. So someone deny, uh, the Westminster standard, it means they just deny the Presbyterian faith. Also, they deny the fundamental doctrine from the Bible. Once more, I emphasize the doctrine on verbal plenary preservation. If you read the Westminster Confession of Faith carefully, you can find the verbal plenary preservation uh, is supported by Westminster Confession of Faith. The Presbyterian minister, some Presbyterian ministers, they deny the verbal plenary preservation. Of course, they are saying they believe in the verbal plenary inspiration. But they deny verbal plenary preservation. But clearly, the Westminster Confession of Faith is teaching verbal plenary preservation. They took the oath when they were ordained as a Presbyterian minister to accept uh, Westminster Confession of Faith as the stance of their faith. That's a contradiction, and they broke their oath before the Lord. In the, they took the oath in the name of God, in the name of the Son, uh, in the name of the Holy Spirit. But what's this? Okay, uh, I took the oath, uh, another oath. In my wedding, the pastor, uh, he forced me to take the oath, okay? So I cannot divorce. If I, I divorce, uh, I cannot be a pastor, okay? So in Korea, anyone divorce, and he cannot be a pastor anymore. He must resign from the pastorship. It's very serious. How about the ordination oath? Also serious. But they still says I'm a Presbyterian minister. There's something wrong. We are Believing in all the precious doctrine in Westminster standards, Westminster Confession of Faith, and Westminster Larger Catechism, and Westminster Shorter Catechism. Why? Because it's so biblical. Comes up from biblical. No contradiction. It's a matter of conscience. And lastly, Machen said that Princeton Theological Seminary lost her noble tradition and Westminster Theological Seminary succeeded the tradition of the old Princeton. Hence, he advocated legitimacy and orthodoxy of the foundation of Westminster Theological Seminary. A Westminster Theological Seminary uh, never uh, fighting again, uh, never uh, fighting uh, against the biblical doctrine. 
They always want to advocate and defend all the truths in the Bible. So we uh, respect uh, the beginning of the Westminster Theological Seminary. Uh, he said, 50 years ago, many colleges and universities and theological seminaries were devoted to the truth of God's word. But one by one, they have drifted away upon with all sorts of professions of orthodoxy on the part of those who were responsible for the change. Uh, one by one, uh, they pursue all the biblical truths. So university and seminary colleges change into liberal institutions. Of course, in the history, American church history, there were a lot of good Bible colleges and seminary after the modernist controversy like a Witten College or Fuller Theological Seminary, Faith Theological Seminary, uh, etc. A lot of good Bible colleges. But until today, same with the word of uh, Gresham Machen. One by one, they have drifted away. They departed from the traditions. So now, you know, the Fuller Theological Seminary, of course, this uh, seminary started with the new evangelical minds. Nevertheless, the first time it was sound. But today, the Fuller Theological Seminary became the uh, matrix of all heretical movement. Today, the new heretical movement, one of the new heretical movement is a new apostolic movement. Do you know what is the new apostolic movement? Today, God uh, pointed out new apostles, 12 apostles around the world. They have the highest position in Christian history, Christian uh the areas, so every pastor's bishops must obey to them. This is a new apostolic movement. Also, they say the apostles was the right of the Bible. So they said the Lord is using them to reveal new revelations. This is new apostolic movement out of the Fuller Theological Seminary. The new evangelical movement totally failed today. All, one by one, the old Bible college and seminaries uh, have drifted away, depart from the biblical truth. Until May 1929, one great theological seminary, the seminary at Princeton, registered uh, bravely the current of the age. But now the seminary has been made to conform to the general drift. So, uh, Dr. Machen, he established new, new uh, theological Seminary, Westminster Theological Seminary. Though Princeton Seminary is dead, the noble tradition of Princeton Seminary is alive. Westminster Seminary will endeavor by God's grace to continue that tradition uh, unimpaired. Domitian he uh, concluded his address with this word. We believe for that the uh, Christian religion as it is set forth in the confessional face of the Presbyterian church is true. We believe second, 
that the Christian religion welcome and is capable of scholarly defense. And we believe third that the Christian religion should be proclaimed without fear or favor and in clear opposition to whatever opposes it, whether within or without the church and the only way of salvation for lost mankind. On that platform, brethren, we stand. This uh, was the reason the establishing Westminster Theological Seminary. Because the old Princeton Theological Seminary was dead. No more sound doctrine in the seminary. Inevitably, some professors depart from their seminary and establish a new uh, theological seminary. The Word of God, the biblical truth, is more important than the name. Of course, the Princeton Theological Seminary uh, was good name once upon a time, but uh, they forsake the biblical truth. So people, they want to serve the Word of God out of the Princeton Theological Seminary. The Westminster Theological Seminary is still small. Nevertheless, they want to keep uh, the biblical truth. But now it was established in 1936. Now uh, 2020 years. How many years? Eight, over 80 years. Is there any, any change? Of course. The, in the Westminster Theological Seminary, uh, we can see some new doctrines. They also slightly depart from traditions. Okay? So be careful. So how about the Faison Bible College? I thank God for Faison Bible College because over 50 years uh, this Bible College continually keep the biblical truth. So we were we are fighting against all the false teachings, false doctrines, worldly thought, so survived until today. But how about the next generation? Nobody knows, but next generation also must fight against all false teachings. They have to have good fighting against all the errors and false doctrines, false teachers in their own times. But we have to focus on our own battles. May the Lord help the next generation to keep God's word faithfully. Although Westminster Theological Seminary followed the tradition of the Reformed phase of Princeton Theological Seminary, it was not a blind imitation. One of the most obvious differences between Princeton Theological Seminary and Westminster Theological Seminary was that Westminster Theological Seminary chose to remain free from ecclesiastical control. So they, uh, Westminster Theological Seminary, uh, are free from the control of denomination because they learn from Princeton Theological Seminary. The denomination occupied the inclusivist, conservatives, but embrace all liberals and liberals they control the denomination and denomination destroy very sound Bible college theological seminary, the Princeton Theological Seminary. So they make, made a rule 
the separate from the denomination. So absolutely, they had the freedom to run this Bible college according to the God's word. This, it was a very precious lesson. I believe Faison Bible College also free from any control by denominations. Uh, now, Bible colleges, uh, the Bible Presbyterian Church in Singapore has no synod. Uh, some people, they made the synod, but this, this synod has no relationship with the, uh, Fison Bible College. So, absolutely, Fison Bible College is free from any control, but from outside. It's good. Uh, next, we have to see IBPFM. It is the Independent Board for Presbyterian Foreign Mission. Some conservatives who had the same mind with Machen attempted to drive out the modernists from the Presbyterian Board of Foreign Missions in PC USA. But it was failed. Then some Presbyterian thought that they could not support the Presbyterian Board of Foreign Missions because the board was under influence of the modernist. So many people, they donate a mission fund. But the uh, missionaries in the field, the liberal missionaries, never use this money to save sinners, to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. They just spend the money, that's all. So they don't want to support the Presbyterian Board of Foreign Missions uh, under influence of the modernist. So they established the independent board for Presbyterian Foreign Missions having absolute freedom from the control of the General Assembly of the Presbyterian Church. This was very conservative and very fundamental agency for missions. And this uh, a mission agency, IBPFM, was not in the PCUSA. This agent was out, outside PCUSA. So it has absolute freedom from the control of the General Assembly of the Presbyterian Church. So first word of this mission agent, independent. Just after General Assembly of 1933, there was the first meeting on July 27, officially to discuss possibility of the establishment of the independent board for Presbyterian foreign missions. On October 17 of the same year, the independent board for Presbyterian foreign missions was established. May Chen was elected as the president of the Independent Board of Presbyterian Foreign Mission. Uh, uh, this time we have to mention uh, Carl McIntyre, Dr. Carl McIntyre. He was the founder and minister in the Bible Presbyterian Church. Now we have the name, the Bible Presbyterian Church, BP Church. It comes, it's not the self-generating in Singapore. It comes from USA, American Bible Presbyterian Church. The founder and long president of the International Council of Christian Churches and ACCC. Uh, he was a very famous religious radio broadcaster. He preached the gospel 
the word of God through the radio broadcasting, proudly identified himself as a fundamentalist. He was fighting against all the era, modernism, communism, and new evangelicals. His day. Remember the name of Carl McIntyre. In 1931, McIntyre was ordained into the ministry of the Presbyterian Church, USA, serving for two years at Chelsea Presbyterian Church, Atlantic City, New Jersey. In 1933, he was called to the Presbyterian Church of Collingswood, New Jersey, near Philadelphia the largest church in the West Judge Presbytery. Presbytery. McIntyre joined the conservative side in the, in the ongoing fundamentalist modernist debate. In 1934, at uh, Machen's invitation, he became a member of the Independent Board for Presbyterian Foreign Missions. And the problem came up from PCUSA. The PCUSA treated the new board as a challenge to its authority and demanded that the clergyman resign. But the IBP FM was not illegal. Nevertheless, the General Assembly of 1934 issued Mandate. May Chen and the members of this independent board refused the mandate. Uh, Carl McIntyre remembered that day. He said, Dr. May Chen took the lead in establishing an independent board for Presbyterian Pori missions outside of denomination. Dr. William Pearl, the stated clerk of the General Assembly, wrote a so-called mandate ordering Dr. Machen and the members of this independent board, and I was privileged to be a member, to resign immediately and to support the official denominational program regardless or be tried we all refused. Actually, the PCEA had no right to order the Carl McIntyre and Machen, all the members of IBP FM to resign because this IBP FM was outside of denominations. But now, because of this reason, the Carl McIntyre and Dr. Gresham Machan, they were member of, uh, still member of PC USA. So they order our pastors must resign from that mission agents, IBP FM. Do not support any more IBP FM, but support BPFM, the our denominational mission agents. But it's impossible because the BPFM was occupied, controlled by modernists. The conservatives, how can they support the liberal mission agents? So they all refused. After Machen and the members of this independent board refused mandate, the secretary of the General Assembly sent a letter the secretaries of the presbyteries. The presbytery of the New Brunswick, Machen was a member of this presbytery, did the requirement of the General Assembly precisely. So on December 20, the Presbytery appointed a committee of seven for the trial of Machen. 
The trial was held during February and March of 1935. Mei Chen had no opportunity to defend himself. The committee declared Mei Chen guilty and suspended him from his office. Though Mei Chen appealed to the General Assembly, it was rejected. Then Mei Chen and his supporters withdraw, withdrew from the PC USA and established the Presbyterian Church of America. Later, this uh, denomination changed the name to Orthodox Presbyterian Church. 34 ministers, 7 ruling elders, and 79 laymen met in Philadelphia on June uh, 11, 1936 to constitute the Presbyterian Church of America because of a lawsuit brought by the Presbyterian Church in the USA. The name of the new church was changed to the Orthodox Presbyterian Church in 1939. Uh, Mei and Carl McIntyre and the other ministers of Orthodox Presbyterian Church, they tried to stay in PC USA. They want to change uh, denomination if it is possible, but it was impossible. And liberalists, they hate fundamentalists and they never allow them any freedom to do for the word of God, for the testimony of Jesus Christ. So no way, so all the pastors, fundamental, the pastors, ruling elders, they came out from PCUSA. Do you know the, remember the word of God? From Second Second Corinthians chapter six verse seventeen, come out from among them and be ye separate, says the Lord. They just they refused, rejected the, the mandate from General Assembly PC USA, but they obeyed to the word of God. So. 1934-35-1936, the General Assembly of Presbyterian Church in USA, uh, controlled by modernists, so they cannot stay there, so they withdrew from PC USA, and they established new denomination, Orthodox Presbyterian Church. So now three, uh, the organization, the institutes, uh, first, um, Bible College, okay, um, the Westminster Theological Seminary, and second, the Mission Agency, okay, the Independent Board of Presbyterian Foreign Missions, and third, new denomination, Orthodox Presbyterian Church. These new institutions established by J. Gresham Machen. Uh, they wanted to continue the true spiritual succession of the Presbyterian Church in the USA. Now, the, in the name of Presbyterian uh, Church in USA, PC US, USA, they departed from the traditional uh, Presbyterian traditions, all the Orthodox traditions. Now the Orthodox Presbyterian Church, they uh, want to uh, hold, pa hold fast the Orthodoxy and traditions of the biblical faith, biblical truth. So they call their denomination's name Orthodox Presbyterian Church. 
this is uh, uh, respectation, uh, the orthodox, orthodox, orthodox and tradition from uh, the apostolic church. Okay. At this assembly, Machen was chosen the moderator, but Machen passed away suddenly on January 1st, 1933. So sad, after, uh, not after one year, a few months, he called to heaven by the Lord. Here you will have a battle too when you go forth as minister into the church. The church is now in a period of deadly conflict. The redemptive religion known as Christianity is contending in our own church and in all the large churches of the world against a totally alien type of religion. Increasingly, it is becoming necessary for a man to decide uh, whether he is going to stand or not to stand for the Lord Jesus Christ. As he is presented to us in the word of God, if you decide to stand for Christ, you will not have an easy life in the ministry. Uh, May Chen, he did his best to, to defend the fundamental doctrines in the Bible. He was fighting against modernists. So 1936 until 1936, he established three institutions, the Westminster Theological Seminary and the Orthodox Presbyterian Church, and the uh, independent board of Presbyterian for Mission, three agencies, and he passed away. What happened with the uh, ministers who joined OPC? Okay, they came out from PC USA, and what happened to the ministers? He, they resigned from his church because all the church belonged to PC USA. So they must uh, came, come out from that church, resign from pastorship, one church, and they also lost all properties. All properties belong to PC USA. So Dr. Carl McIntyre, he resigned from the church and he came out from the church uh, with church members. Uh, many church members came out with him and they built a tent house. Okay? So they lost every right in uh, PC USA. They start new era, new beginning, with, uh, with empty hand. They sacrifice their old properties, sacrifice their pastorship in the church, uh, with empty hand. They, they just depend on God's power and the Lord blessed them. The Lord used the pastors who came out from PC USA. Uh, Reverend Dr. Timothy To, he was the founding pastor of uh, the Bible Presbyterian Churches in Singapore. He also founding principal of Far Eastern Bible College. The Lord used him mightily and he established uh, Bible College and the BP churches in Singapore. But after 40 years, 45 years, I believe something changed in the church. Now that church 
never follow the, the tradition of Westminster Confession of Faith, they became new evangelicals. So, Reverend Timothy Toll, he resigned his pastorship from the mother church and he came out. He established a new church. We know this church very well, True Life Bible Presbyterian Church. But the Lord blessed this church and this church now support Firestone Bible College, work together. God is using this church mightily. Don't afraid the, the lost something. Just depend on God's hand and trust Him. And He will guide you. He will use you mightily. So don't pray. God is Almighty God. So the, these pastors was used by God mightily. So they were fighting continually against uh, the modernist. Let's see, split in Orthodox Presbyterian Church. Conflict in OPC. The ultra-conservatives fundamentalists founded the Orthodox Presbyterian Church on June 1936. Strictly speaking, the ultra-conservatives were consisted of the exclusive conservatives and the fundamentalists. I call this fundamentalist more strong, so I call the them uh, militant fundamentalist. They never fear to fight against the errors, false doctrines against the modernists. So I call them militant fundamentalist. Generally, the exclusive conservatives supported. Uh, Dr. Machen and the fundamentalist, uh, militant fundamentalist, uh, supported Dr. Carl McIntyre because there are some differences between, uh, Dr. Machen and Dr. Carl McIntyre. Uh, I believe it comes from the educational background of two persons. Um, Mei Chen, he studied for, he, for his theological studies, he studied in Germany under the liberal uh, theologians. But he overcome all the errors, he became the dependent of Christian faith. Nevertheless, he has some, uh, I, I think, some problems. First of all, that time, of course, he was using the West, uh, West Code and the whole text for Greek text. So, uh, I heard his book and he wrote in his letter, he said, our Bible had some problems uh, compared with the Greek text. Of course, he was using West Code and whole text. That's a problem, the first problem. And second, the view of eschatology. He was a amillennialist uh, because um, his the interpretation of the Bible and his view uh, influenced by the liberal, I believe. So most liberals, they had uh, two views. Uh, one is a post-millennial view, one is a amillennial view. Uh, amillennial view called, so called the uh, fulfilled millennialism. Anyway, the, all the fundamentalists, they were, uh, pre-millennialists. 
Millennial, free millennialist means that Jesus Christ is coming again before the millennial. And post-millennialism means Jesus Christ is coming after millennium. Amillennialism means no millennium. The, this church age is the millennium. Okay? So, but the, all the fundamentalists, they were that time all Premillennialist, and third problem was um, the related with Christian conduct about drinking alcohol and um, the smoking. So the faculty, majority of faculty, the West of Westminster Theological Seminary, they was thinking the drinking alcohol and the smoking, uh, no problem. Even the professors, they were smoking and drinking alcohol. Also the theological student, same, drinking alcohol and the smoking. But they said it's no problem. This is not sin. Um, it's only the related with um, Christian conduct. Okay, if you are stopping the drinking alcohol, smoking is good. It's better, but but do not condemn who is drinking alcohol and smoking. Okay, this is a matter of Christian conduct. But the fundamentally, they strongly again this kind of attitude. Hmm? Through Westminster Theological Seminary, Dr. May Chen wanted to succeed the reformed face of the old Princeton Theological Seminary. However, the fundamentalists who supported Westminster Theological Seminary because they were against modernism thought that this attitude was not enough. The conservatives who were with Dr. Machen did not agree to identify fundamentalism with Christianity. So Dr. Machen said, I am not a fundamentalist. And he said, I don't like fundamentalism because they focused on only several the points. Fundamental doctrine in the Bible, but we have to teach whole counsel of God's word. He said, "Of course, I'm agree with Doctor Machen, but he had to know the special environment situation of the fundamentalism. Why fundamentally they emphasize some special doctrines? The five points." Fundamental, fundamentals. Why? Because the liberals, more than it, they continually, without ceasing, attack the fundamental doctrines. So it was necessary to defend these fundamental doctrines against the modernist. That's the reason. Of course, I'm a fundamentalist. Also, this Bible college, Fison Bible College, is fundamental Bible college. But we are not teaching only five points of fundamentals. Of course, this is very, very important doctrines. But we are teaching you whole counsel of God's word. We are uh, learning church history, learning uh, systematic theology, even Calvin Institute, and Bible geographies on hermeneutics, everything our teach are teaching us to understand God's word, to teach God's word. Beyond this Cause there are three problems between two groups. First, different view of millennialism. Okay, so on uh, Machen side, they had the uh, millennial view. 
but the fundamentalists, Dr. Carl McIntyre's side, they had a pre-millennial view. And second is issued on IBP FM. Now the after uh, the establishing um, the IBP FM, the Dr. Carl McIntyre, he became the president of the IBP FM. So now IBP FM was controlled by fundamentalists. This is second issue. The third is different concept of smoking and drinking alcohol. So these three issues very important in the history of Bible Presbyterian Church. So Bible Presbyterian Church must have premillennialism and uh, we have to also focus on the mission and third we have to very clear concept on smoking and drinking alcohol the millennialism uh, Dr. Manchin was a millennialist and almost fundamentalist including Dr. McIntyre was pre-millennialist when Westminster Theological Seminary was founded in 1929, the view of eschatology of this seminary was not clear. There are struggles in the denomination for different views of eschatology. The Orthodox Presbyterian Church wanted to declare the position of the denomination through the faculty of Westminster Theological Seminary. Some of the faculty members criticized the dispensationalism strongly. Okay, dispensationalism arose in the early 19th century in Great Britain with the Brethren Movement, which was led by John Nelson Darby. Classical dispensationalism divided human history into seven periods according to different dispensations. Classical dispensationalism was criticized because of its non-biblical concept. I'm a fundamentalist. Also, I have the view of eschatology, premillennialism. I strong against also um, classical dispensationalism because this is not biblical, this is non-biblical concept. So I strong against, I agree with, uh, with the Westminster Theological Seminary faculty. Okay? But in the spring of 1936, uh, how about our position? Are we uh, dispensationalist? No. We still hold fast the Reformed theology. We are not dispensationalist. I believe in the the Old Testament saying they were saved by Jesus Christ. Also, New Testament saying, including us, we are saved by Jesus Christ. Same principles, same salvation way by Jesus Christ. This is, we call this covenant theology. Or the, we call this um, Reformed Theology. We are in Reformed Theology, not Dispensationalism. Okay? Uh, in the spring of 1936, 
John Murray of the Systematic Theology Department of Westminster Theological Seminary started to contribute articles on the Reformed faith and modern substitute to Presbyterian Guardian, which was made by Dr. Mei Chen in 1935. The editor of this magazine said that there was no intention to evict fundamentalists from denomination through the article of Murray because he himself was a premillennialist. Evan Murray also said that he dealt only classical dispensational, dispensationalism. Okay, until okay. I am also uh, 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 opposite position against uh, classical uh, dispensationalism. However, the fundamentalists considered it was an attack against them from the amillennialists, especially Dr. Carl McIntyre reacted against R.B. Kuiper. Kuiper pointedly called both fundamentalists and dispensationalists as anti-reformed heresies. Someone call you, you are heresy because of the view of eschatology. What is your reaction? Okay, you are right. I am heresy. No. We believe the premillennialism is most biblical view, but they, the amillennialism something wrong in their interpretation of the Bible. You know, the conservative scholars, they are interpreted all the Bible literally from Genesis to Epistle of Jude. Literally. Why they believed in the bubble plenary inspiration. The Lord inspired all the words in the Bible. So words must be interpreted literally. I call the, this kind of hermeneutics, bubble plenary hermeneutics. We have to respect, we have to believe in the bubble plenary inspiration. Every word was inspired. So we have to translate, we have to interpret all the Bible according to the word, literally. But uh, this amillennialist has uh, an exception, the revelation. They said revelation must be uh, interpreted by the spiritual method, spiritually. Even some said allegorically, symbolically. I believe the premillennialism is a uh, traditional from apostolic church until today. So if the amillennialism or postmillennialism is more biblical than uh, premillennialism, I'll take the amillennialism or postmillennialism. But still, until today, I studied the Revelation and all the Bible to interpret, uh, to teach the Revelation as premillennialism is the best. I, I study the book of Hosea and there are some purposes uh, but uh, our millennialists cannot interpret some birds because these birds will, will be fulfilled with nation Israel. But our millennialists, they had a sharp distinction between the church and 
the nation Israel. They said church replaced the position of the nation Israel. But uh, some purposes in book of Hosea cannot be fulfilled with the church. So I searched all the commentaries. It, it, is very, it was very interesting because some very difficult with the millennium to interpret, they just jump, no explain, just jump the buses. Okay. But with the premillennialism, all the prophecies will be, could be interpreted. Very interesting. Are we truly anti-reformed heresies? I don't believe that. So, it was really an attack against premillennialism. So Dr. Carl McIntyre and Dr. J. Oliver Boswell, uh, he was the teacher of Dr. Reverend Thor, were premillennialist but not dispensationalist. I'm a premillennialist also, but I am not dispensationalist. Alan A. Bagree, a uh, professor of Old Testament of Westminster Theological Seminary was a premillennialist also. For this reason, he resigned from the professor of Westminster Theological Seminary and became the first principal of the Faith Theological Seminary. McCree. J. Oliver Boswell, uh, Many of you, uh, most of you, already read his book, uh, Systematic Theology, but I read his book, it brought me a lot of confusion. Uh, titled uh, Systematic Theology, but the writing uh, is not systematic, okay? But uh, Dr. Uh, Timothy To and Jeffrey Koo, they uh, rewrite the Boswell's book, the, the white book, the systematic theology is more clear. I love this book. Uh, the Oliver Boswell, although not a dispensationalist, he was a premillennialist who believed in what pre-tribulation is called mid-tribulation rapture. Uh, I am a pre-tribulation rapture view. I have. But uh, Boswell, he had a uh, mid-tribulation rapture view. But he was uh, still the premillennialist. Uh, about the rapture view in premillennialism camp, there are various views. Uh, some of them pre-rapture and some of them um, the mid-rapture mid-tribulation rapture, and someone said the partial tribulation rapture. Rapture, okay? Bears view. But the common sense is pre-millennialism, okay? He was considered a fundamentalist in his day, given his firm stand against the modernist accommodation within mainline Protestant denomination and his insistence on holding to the historic fundamentals of Christian doctrine. He went on to the participate in several different separatist Presbyterian denomination in his life, including the Orthodox Presbyterian Church, the Bible Presbyterian Church, the Evangelical Presbyterian Church, and the Reformed Presbyterian Church. Uh, Alan McCree, he was a scholar of Babylonian cuneiform. Uh, cuneiform means uh, it's the old style, Babylonian style letters. Okay? Egyptian uh, hieroglyphs, the Egyptian letter, Arabic, uh, Syriac, 
and other Semitic languages. He was a, a great scholar. He was a founding minister of the OPC in 1936. However, he was of a certain segment of those within the OPC that had strong beliefs advocating premillennialism and abstinence from alcohol. The following year, along with, along with Carl McIntyre, he had organized Faith Theological Seminary, a seminary which primarily served the Bible Pres Presbyterian Church. He separated from McIntyre in 1971 to, from, to, uh, Biblical Theological Seminary. So he became the founder of the Biblical Theological Seminary. But uh, until uh, today, uh, this Bible college um, changed their uh, attitude, their view uh, on the Bible. Uh, my uh, junior in Korea, he studied in biblical seminary. He learned the criticism in this school, so he was shocked because he graduated from um, Pensacola Christian College, very conservative college. But after a bibli after graduating Pensacola Bible College, he studied bibli uh, biblical theological seminary. Uh, he learned about uh, uh, criticism. Okay, now biblical theological seminary is not uh, stand for the old face. Millennial views, uh, post-millennialism, are millennialism, pre-millennialism. Uh, we are pre-millennialist but pre-millennialism has two view, two uh, three views uh, one is the historical pre-millennialism they are anti Israel okay they do not believe the na the, the nation Israel so they said uh, the church replace the nation Israel. So they said uh, the tribulation, seven years tribulation in Revelation, uh, church must uh, go through because actually it's for Israelites, but church replaced the nation Israel. The church must uh, go through uh, seven years tribulation. Okay, This is the uh, historical premillennialism. The second view of premillennialism is dispensationalist premillennialism. Premillennialism of dispensationalist. This is quite different from our view. Okay? Our view is the so-called dispensational premillennialism, but it's not the premillennialism of dispensationalist. So it brings us sometimes some confusion. It's, uh, this confusion beginning from the 1936, 37 in Westminster Theological Seminary, because that time the fundamentalist was using this term, dispensational premillennialism. So Kuiper, he made the dispensational, dispensational premillennialism to, uh, is, uh, was the, is the same with the premillennialism with, of the dispensationalist. Do you understand what I mean? This comes, bring us some confusion. So, uh, several years ago, I wrote one research paper under the class of eschatology under Reverend Dr. Ku. I wrote one paper and that time I suggest 
the changing the name of our uh, premillennial view. No more using dispensational. It brings us some confusion, so I suggest him pro-Israel premillennialism or Bible Presbyterian Church premillennialism or covenantal premillennialism. Bible College of East Africa, uh, we are, uh, we change the, our view, the, only the name, not the contents name, to covenantal or pro-Israel premillennialism already. I don't know in FPBC, the pro-Israel or covenantal premillennialism. This is my view. But don't confuse our view with the premillennialism of dispensationalism. This is quite different. We are belong to a reformed theology, covenantal theology, not the dispensationalism. Okay? So only Bible Presbyterian Church has this position, this kind of premillennialism. Pro-Israel or covenantal premillennialism. Uh, even though Orthodox Presbyterian Church was established, the denomination did not found a new mission board, but supported supported IBPFM, Independent Board of Foreign uh, Presbyterian Foreign Missions, continually. At the time, Orthodox Presbyterian Church, Westminster Theological Seminary, and uh, Independent Board of Presbyterian Foreign Mission were controlled by men of Dr. May Chen. Dr. McIntyre did not like this kind of conditions. Um, he was a natural leader. Uh, he was very smart, uh, but he was not a theologian. He was a man of action. Uh, McIntyre and his people took over independent board of Presbyterian Foreign Mission after the Second General Assembly of Orthodox Presbyterian Church. Until from since this time, over 20 years or 30 years, uh, Carl McIntyre, he served the IBP FM. But now the IBP FM, they delete all the name and all the footsteps of Carl McIntyre. Because IBP FM, now they want to return back to uh, Orthodox Church. Dr. Machen emphasized Presbyterian character of independent board of Presbyterian foreign mission. He wanted to support uh, Presbyterian ministers. But uh, Dr. Carl McIntyre emphasized independent character with. So, if anyone has uh, agree with us fundamental doctrine in the Bible, he supported them, whether they are Baptist or whether they are other denomination, independent, uh, Carl McIntyre supported them. So we follow this kind of traditions. So, and Dr. McIntyre cooperated with non-Presbyterian Protestant fundamentalists. Later, the, it related with the International Council of Christian Churches, ICCC. So ICCC, uh, the membership, a lot of denominations, not only Presbyterian churches, some Episcopal churches, some uh, Bi uh, Presbyterian churches, even also Bible Presbyterian churches, 
Um, Baptist churches, all the denomination who hold fast the fundamental doctrine of the Bible. Uh, fundamentalists like uh, Boswell and McIntyre did not like that the faculty of Westminster Theological Seminary did not want to condemn drinking and smoking. The faculty of Westminster Theological Seminary rejected to advocate total abstinence. Even some of them did smoke. The Presbytery of Chicago, of which Boswell was a member, the bill of total abstinence to the General Assembly, but it was rejected. Boswell won the General Assembly uh, if this the the bill of total abstinence uh, rejected, uh, he will depart the Orthodox Presbyterian Church. It was very serious. Just after General Assembly 14, ministers and three ruling elders came out from the denomination, from the Orthodox Presbyterian Church, and founded the Bible Presbyterian Church in 1937 by leading Dr. Boswell and Dr. McIntyre. This is the beginning of the Bible Presbyterian Church denomination. Uh, now, more problems of Westminster Theological Seminary. In 2005, Paul M. Elliot, a former ruling elder in the Orthodox Presbyterian Church, published a book uh, named uh, Christianity and Neoliberalism. Do you remember the book written by uh, Gresham Machen? The Christianity and Liberalism. But now, Paul Elliot, he published Christianity and Neoliberalism. He exposed the decline and fall of the Orthodox Presbyterian Church from the first doctrine taught by the faculty of Westminster Theological Seminary. Okay, why the book's name is Neoliberalism? Carl McIntyre, he was fighting against liberalism. But now, the Westminster Theological Seminary and the Orthodox Presbyterian Church became neoliberalism. What is neoliberalism? New liberal, new modernism. This is the first teaching in OPC and Westminster Theological Seminary. Exposed. What's that? Uh, first, the shepherd controversy. Uh, Shepherd clearly rejected that the uh, justification of the elect sinner is by faith alone without any works whatsoever. This is uh, departing from uh, traditions of tradi uh, Calvinistic or Reformed theology. So it comes out from Westminster Theological Seminary. And second is the new perspective on Paul. The people are saved not through faith in Christ alone, but through an existential and experiential union through which beliefs achieve solidarity with Christ. But remember the five solas, okay? Sola scriptura, sola fide, sola gratia, solo Christo, soli deo gloria. Remember this. Don't forget. Now they uh, do not believe uh, five solas. Okay, the they do not believe in faith alone, sola fide. 
they do not believe in sola gratia, they do not believe in uh, solo Christo. And also they had uh, some wrong view in hermeneutics. It this is called incarnational hermeneutics by Peter Enns. Uh, in the same way that uh, Jesus Christ, uh, He is 100% God, He is the Son of God, but He became man, incarnation. In the same way that Jesus is, must be, both God and man, the Bible is also divine and human meanings. Okay? Divine and human book. What's this? We believe, of course, the Lord used the human writer to write down uh, His word. But nevertheless, we believe the Bible is God's word. Divine authority. And he also, the Bible, the letters, has two meanings. One is the human, uh, the literal meaning. Another is the beyond the literal meaning. Christ has two nature, divine nature and human nature. Likewise, Bible has two nature, divine nature, human nature. And interpretation also, uh, require two ways, divine way and human way. Of course, human way, literal interpretation, how about divine uh, interpretation beyond the letter? Of course, in the Christian history, uh, someone uh, said the Bible has the meaning beyond the letter. Who? The Gnostics, Gnosticism. They said uh, the spiritual thing, spirit is good and material is bad. So they was thinking the letters also one kind of material. So met, uh, letter is something bad. So the meaning of God, the will of God, how can remain in the material thing, in the letter? So they always seek beyond the letter spiritual meaning. Very similar with the Gnostic interpretation, the incarnational hermeneutics. This is the Westminster Theological Seminary. So be careful. We cannot return back to Orthodox Presbyterian Church anymore because now they are departing from the Calvinistic theology and Reformed theology. Now they deny all the works from Reformers. They deny the five solas. They said, oh, we are studying very hard. We developed a new theology. So we have a new concept, new perspective on Paul, new perspective about justification, new perspective about the hermeneutics. But it is all really new, totally new? No. There's Nothing new in theology except heresy. So we cannot agree with the shepherd controversy, new perspective on Paul, incarnational hermeneutics. If you want to study this, uh, study some more because we have to know all wrong doctrine outside of tra our tradition, a Presbyterian theology, Reformed theology, Covenantal theology, you have to know as a leader of the church. I do not encourage you to learn from this thing, new one, okay? But you have to protect 
your church and your people. Now my uh, nation, the Korea, so many theological students and the Bible college professor, they are studying new perspective on Paul. They accept this kind of concept. They said the Reformation was something wrong, mistake, errors. What is all this? Study and protect your people and yourselves. Study hard God's word, meditate God's word. I will deliver you from all false doctrine and false teachings. 